Now, as I hear the history of this country, uh, hopefully the question coming up for y'all is, how can this relic still be standing? As you hear the history of DeKalb County and you know what this relic was used for, how can the county still have it here? It just doesn't make sense. Make a demand of the county to remove it. Behind Dr. Patton is a QR code for a petition. Please scan it, please sign the petition. If you're interested in organizing with Beacon Hill Black Alliance for Human Rights, make your way to that table and sign up. We need you. Isn't that right, Molly? We need you. <laughs> Y'all, that's the Beacon Hill Black Alliance for Human Rights co-chair, Molly Davis. All right, next up we have Jennifer Gonzalez. And Jennifer is a history teacher at Decatur High School. And she's gonna be speaking on why this history is relevant for students today. And I wanna add on something really quickly. I appreciate Brother Anthony for being willing to take the risk he's taken because he said he wants to teach black children our history. But in reality, y'all, all our children need this history, no matter what ethnic group they're a part of. This is a history all children should know. So we're gonna to continue to organize teaching such as this if school systems refuse to teach our children the history that is true, that is accurate, right, and that's complete. Not just pieces of it that fits the power structure as we know it today, but the complete history. So keep organizing with us, please. Jennifer, please come on up. Jennifer's a member of Beacon Hill Black Alliance for Human Rights and an ally. We appreciate you. Hey, y'all, I also want to introduce my, my partner. This is Jennifer Young. She is the graduation coach at Decatur High School, and she has a lot uh, contributes a lot to what we should be doing in school, which is bringing students in, getting them engaged in what is not just a superficial understanding of history, but a, a, an understanding of real history. And that goes deep and it becomes uncomfortable and it becomes important, especially when people are trying to shut it down. And we need that to be really clear. So I'm gonna let Jennifer say hi for herself for a minute. Hey there, everybody. So I'm passing the mic immediately back. If you see, there's a blue line there. That blue line that I drew across those, those sidewalk, pieces of sidewalk, symbolizes actual history, what actually took place. We're gonna have a bit of a conversation and demonstration of what happens uh, when the spirit of erasure, white supremacy, and all of the things that try to change what that blue line actually is and looks like to other people. Uh, so go ahead, Jeff, we're gonna go first. So today already you guys have heard about the history of the Muscogee people, but you may not have heard that in school. And you heard the history of the Daughters of the American Republic, and you may not have heard that in school. Because as we go through, and you can see Jennifer now, pouring water and making these breaks in history. Y'all, history is not permanent. History is constructed, and it can be reconstructed. And what's happening now is erasure. And sometimes, especially today, that erasure is important to recognize. We need to know that when we are told we cannot use words like, um, well, my most practical example is if you guys look at the teaching notes for US history, in the last revision, there was a big change. That change meant that we no longer call them plantations, we call them commercial farms. What? That is an erasure. Oh. And when I teach my students plantation and they don't see it on the test, they don't know what a commercial farm is. So it forces teachers to use language that erase what's really happening. And this is what the teaching is for. We have to understand that this is not just something that happened in 1908 or that the Daughters of the American Republic stopped. They just changed names and they got elected. And they meant, what that means for us today is that we still have to look for our history, right? And that is gonna be up to all of us, right? That's not just a teacher teaching in a classroom because we are being silenced. We're being silenced by the governor, we're being silenced by the market, we're being silenced by textbooks, right? And the way textbooks work, the most simple way I can explain it is that Texas and California have a legislative um, position where they purchase one book for the entire state, right? So what does that mean? That means that publishers are incentivized to get the business from Texas, because if you can sell Texas, you can sell a lot of books. What that means is that our standards and our textbooks are controlled by the legislator in Texas, right? So when we're wondering where does this history come from and who gets to decide, 
It's those people that are erasing our history. It's those people that are changing the word plantation to be commercial farm. And it's those people who are leaving out essential people in history, right? And we have to continue to search for that. And it's not going to be in your textbook. So it's going to have to be in the community, right? Each one of you or many of you right now have a list of facts, right? And what we want to do going forward is to recognize that words like critical race theory or diversity, equity, and inclusion in education are important and that we need to demand it. And you need to support the teachers who are desperately trying to teach your kids by, by going to those board meetings. Right? You want them to tell all of the truth to all of the children, but that means they need your support too. And a part of that is removing curriculum because see, I see this relic as curriculum. It is intended to teach our children it is intended to teach our children that there is a war that we need to celebrate. But to me, I imagine the people trying to register to vote right here. And that line coming here and having a cannon placed intentionally at those people. And what it meant to have to stand in front of a cannon or a lost cause monument to try to break through that barrier and continue to register to vote. Right? That's curriculum. That's what our children are being taught. What we can do now is we can continue to teach each other. Right? So what we want to do, um, we have a couple more speakers, but we want to recognize that at the end of what we're doing, we're going to give everybody a piece of chalk. And what we would love for you to do is cover the sidewalks with whatever you learned today, because that's not being taught in your school and it can be taught in the square. All right? right? So I really appreciate you guys being here today. Um, and the reason that we're using chalk is because this is just like history. If we're not careful, it can all get washed away. If we don't do our part to fill in those gaps with truth, to rewrite it over and over and over again, we run out of the truth. It's no longer written anywhere. It's not there. Our job as educators, your job as our local community, your job as our students who will live long, long after us is to keep the true history alive and well. So not just write it today. If you've got another piece, you write it tomorrow, you write it next week, you write it the year after that and the year after that, because that becomes the truth that we all see forever. We all have a part in this. So everybody, take a piece of chalk, write any piece of truth, any piece of history that is important to you in this space and where we live. Because guess what? We are history. Write it down, folks.